Erebos, the god of the dead on the plain of Theros, once asked a question. When does a hero's journey begin? Erebos was referring to the journey of one Elspeth Terrell, a true hero who, throughout her life, fought for the weak after freeing herself from the torturous Phyrexians. But today, in the modern story of MTG, where will Elspeth's journey lead? As Phyrexia spreads throughout the multiverse, Elspeth stands at the precipice of defeat. What will be her fate? Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Saibin, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, we're taking a look at another preview of Magic's upcoming set, March of the Machine, which is continuing from the story left off with Phyrexia All Will Be One. Specifically, we will be discussing the role Elspeth Terrell will play in the upcoming story. This is going to be more theory and prediction territory, but it should be a lot of fun nonetheless. I'll go over Elspeth's recent history in dealing with the Phyrexians, where we left her in All Will Be One, and what I believe will be her ultimate fate. And all of that comes from a simple common, though it is a story spotlight card which gives us our first glimpse into the March of Machines story. But first, what's going on with Elspeth? In the most recent story of All Will Be One, we found Elspeth working with the other Planeswalkers of the Strike Team to stop the plans of Elish Norn on New Phyrexia. While friends continued to fall and become completed, Elspeth stayed true to her conviction, and more accurately, her hatred towards the Phyrexians. She ultimately would duel 1v1 against her former friend, a Johnny Goldmane, who too was completed. Though their duel didn't get as much spotlight as I would have hoped for, still Elspeth fought through her own self-doubt and knocked out a Johnny, making sure not to kill him just in case there may be some means of reversing the completion process. So with that obstacle dealt with, she hurries to find the others about to set off the Silex at the base of Realmbreaker, this giant interplanar tree which would give the Phyrexians access to countless worlds to conquer. Though she just stumbles into this situation, her heroic instincts kick in. She somehow knows the gravity of activating the Silex without any prior knowledge. Jace is using the Silex to destroy the tree, but the tree is now connected to planes. Kaya questions how this explosion could affect the multiverse. Jace, who is about to be completed himself, doesn't really care. Again, Elspeth doesn't know any of this, but stabs the nearly completed Jace through the chest, grabs the Silex, and in service to the planes connected to Realmbreaker, she planes walks away with the Silex in mid-blast. We aren't given much information, but it's said that Elspeth travels to the space between space, the Blind Eternities, the bridge between planes, but on no plane in particular. So essentially, she explodes it in outer space, a Tony Stark in Avengers moment. This is where we're left, not knowing the fate of Elspeth. Does she live? Did she heroically sack her life for these planes that she honestly shouldn't have even known were in danger, and in fact her actions, with her limited knowledge, was actually sabotaging their mission? Questions kinda answered with a common in March of the Machine, Moment of Truth a fitting name for this story spotlight card. Mechanically, this card isn't anything special, just another blue tool to help you cycle through your deck a bit. A slight variation of Anticipate. Typically, the juice of these story spotlight cards can be found in the flavor text. On the precipice of eternity, Elspeth made a choice. The fight would not end without her. It does answer one of our questions. Did Elspeth's heroic journey end with the Silex in space? Nope. She's presented with a choice. A very Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows choice. But really, where we can get the most of our lore theory crafting is the artwork of this card. This doesn't exactly look like how the ethereal realm of the Blind Eternities is typically described. It looks more afterlifey than a dark, never-ending void. So what exactly is going on here? I believe Elspeth could have been transported to another realm altogether with the explosion of the Silex. Because of her close proximity, her being the one who was actually holding the artifact, it could be a very unique consequence of its wielder to be transported to this pocket reality, a pocket plane. Luckily, this isn't the first time this has happened, so there is some precedence in the MTG lore. 
In the story of the Brothers War, Urza Planeswalker was the first person of modern times to activate the Silex while holding it in his lap, all in the defense of Dominaria against the Phyrexians. As we know, Urza was not killed by the blast, the same blast that killed all of the Phyrexian influence, his brother Mishra and both of their forces, the same blast that shot Dominaria back into an ice age, it didn't kill him. In fact, it reconstructed him as a planeswalker, one whose power was without equal, merging his eyes with the Mightstone and Weakstone. He essentially was buffed upon using the Silex. For years after that story, its effects were left vague, until Tefiri, the Time Mage, used his time-traveling shenanigans to witness Urza's use of the Silex firsthand. Together they were engulfed in the magical light of the blast. Tefiri felt like they had entered a void, a white nothingness. There was no reality around them. It was here Urza was broken down and reconstructed. Perhaps this place depicted in Moment of Truth is this strange pocket realm that Urza had traveled to. Maybe here Elspeth feels two forces pulling on her. A time to rest, to not return to reality and to be taken by the blast but another to return, maybe even given the same treatment as Urza, becoming stronger as a result. This is just one possibility, but there is another, one that's had some fan support for some time now. It's been a fan favorite theory for a long time, that Elspeth may be some kind of angel or other divine being living her life as a human without knowledge of her own nature. Originally, this theory started because of how her character was described, that she glows a calming white aura, that she inspired hope in others merely by her presence, just like the angels do on Innistrad, for example. But this could also be chopped up as being a master of white mana. Still, it started to get people to question about Elspeth. The theory remained because her character's backstory was never really fleshed out. For a planeswalker with so much airtime and so many stories across several years in MTG lore, we know almost nothing about Elspeth's origins. For most of her existence, we were only told that when she was young, she was tortured by the Phyrexians on her home plane and that triggered her planeswalker spark. She didn't know the name of her home plane, being born to a world already conquered by the Phyrexians, and nothing was noted about her parents or manner of birth. So in theory, that leaves the door open that she could be some kind of angel. But this would be weird, right? Angels in magic are typically beings of coalesced mana, concentrations of pure white mana given physical form. Surely Elspeth would know or show some signs of this nature before now, before being blown up by the Silex, right? This isn't even the first time she died. She died back on Theros and didn't turn into an angel there. So surely, this theory is discredited, right? Hold your horses. Dying on Theros may not mean anything because of the strange rules there and Erebos controlling souls and the afterlife. She basically just continued to be alive just in the underworld, so maybe she didn't truly die there. Okay then, what about her appearance? Not having wings should be a dead giveaway, right? Not exactly. Think about what was revealed to be her home world, the events of Nukapenna. There was an angel character in that story that appeared to be nothing more than a normal young girl. Giada. It was in this story that the theories about Elspeth being an angel really started to pick up steam. On Nuka Penna, the angels were captured by the demons and encased in stone. They were kept that way so they could siphon off Halo, their natural essence that the denizens used to fight the Phyrexians. They would go on to win that war. Elspeth here can even hear the faint songs of the trapped angels in stone, which no one else can do besides Giada, who is also an angel. At the conclusion of that story, Giada releases all of her halo, revealing that she too was an angel, gifting Elspeth with Luxiar, healing her wounds and spirit, as well as freeing her fellow angels from their stony prisons. It was in this act that Giada laid on thick that Elspeth had family and a home. Now it looks like she was referring to New Capenna and all these newly freed angels, because Giada knew the true nature of Elspeth even if she didn't see it at that moment. Okay, so all plausible stuff, but how does it connect to this card, Moment of Truth? Looking at Giada's example from the story, death for an angel seems to be different. 
She was choosing to go home. Maybe angels of New Capenna are more humanly than those of other planes. As seen with Giada, her and Elspeth glowed in the same exact way, heard the same chorus. It's clear they're connected, and that connection must lie in their purpose, their natures. As Giada sacrifices her life, it grants a greater power to Elspeth. Maybe now, in sacrificing herself with the Silex, she too unlocks her potential. This card puts Feathers front and center of its artwork. Feathers that, by no right, shouldn't be there. There are no birds, just Elspeth bathed in light. To me, this signifies that leaving the blast of the Silex, Elspeth will be changed. An angel planeswalker, with powers she had merely dabbled in before, now at her beck and call. If Elspeth truly is an angel, and the Silex Blast unlocked the power inside of her, there are a few logistical concerns. One being that we've never seen a planeswalking angel before. Many old Vorthos heads would say that it's impossible, that the spark is only for mortal beings. But honestly, Wizards of the Coast has been changing a lot of these old rules lately, so I wouldn't hold on to that one so strictly. We saw Ob Nixilis get turned into a demon, lose his spark, and then get it back while still being a demon. Maybe not a great one-to-one -one example, but hey, demons shouldn't be able to be planeswalkers either, but we have one. Maybe angels of Nukapenna are much more mortal in nature, thus meaning they can have a spark. Or maybe the nature of the Silex transforms Elspeth into an angel, without being one prior. Maybe Elspeth's magical glow, her connection with the downtrodden and protectedness of the weak, her hearing the angels of Nukapenna, maybe it all just points to Elspeth's angelic nature. At her core, she's an angel despite being a mortal human, and the magic of the Silex just unlocks what's been buried this whole time. While being human, Elspeth fought with the soul of an angel, and so an angel she becomes. Obviously, this would have a huge impact on the future story of MTG. Needless to say, the Phyrexians would be facing a threat on a whole new level. Elspeth hates the Phyrexians with a fiery passion, and with the powers of an angel guiding her hand, she'll devastate them. But it also means that Elspeth could return home afterwards, and maybe heal New Capenna. Make it her home once again, acting as its guardian angel. Either way, it will be many firsts in MTG's lore if any of this turns out to be true. At the end of the day, these are just speculations, but ones I think hold a lot of weight. I want to know what you guys think about these theories and hear some of your own thoughts in the comment section below. And to think we got all of this from a simple common. Thanks, moment of truth. And I want to thank all of you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's video, consider supporting the channel by leaving a like, becoming a subscriber, and sharing it with friends. It all goes a long way in helping us build our community here. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!